Today on Ballistic Barbecue, by request, I'm going to be cooking up Kokomo Bakes on the El Patron. Let's get going. This video was a request from one of my viewers named Ryan. Thank you very much, Ryan. I had never heard of a Kokomo Bake before, and Ryan opened my eyes to what one is. Basically, it's from Kokomo, Indiana, and if you can imagine kind of a seasoned ground beef formed into a hot dog shape, <laughs> baked and put on a hot dog bun. And it has, you know, kind of a special sauce that's drizzled on while it's cooking. Um, I didn't know this was a thing, but it is. Uh, I started looking and I wanted to provide some history and I wanted to learn some of the history of this dish. Um, to my surprise, there's no videos on YouTube. If you, if you go on YouTube and type in, you know, Kokomo Bake or Bakes, you find they're all videos. It's a little girl whose name is Kokomo and she bakes. <laughs> um, so YouTube was worthless in doing my research. I did find uh, articles that were basically providing recipes. They weren't really talking about the history of the Kokomo bakes. Um, I do know that there's a um, hamburger hot dog. It's a Coney stand. It's called Louis Coney Island in Kokomo, Indiana. They've been open since 1937 and one of the items on their menu are Kokomo Bakes. Um, I do not know if they're the inventors of this. Uh, I know Louis, it was a Greek guy, a Greek immigrant who started Louis Coney Island. But again, there's very little on Louis Coney Island, on the restaurant. Um, there was an article written by one of the local uh, publications, but there's a paywall there, so you have to subscribe to the magazine in order to read the article. I don't know if they're providing information, but, um, I do know that the folks in Kokomo love their bakes, and if Louis is getting the credit, I think maybe someone should do a write-up on their family history before it's lost, because I like things like that. That's just me personally. Anyway, I found two recipes. Um, I don't know who is the originator of either recipe. Um, One's bouncing around and it's supposedly a really old recipe, but I, a couple of the reviews I read on the recipe, they weren't positive, so I'm going with the other one. Um, it seems like a pretty viable recipe for a, a, a restaurant if this is like a copycat of uh, Louis Coney Island. Um, nothing blathering. <laughs> Let's get going on the recipe here. I have here one pound of ground beef. This is Chuck, and it, I went with 80-20. And to that, I'm going to add one half cup, very fine breadcrumbs, one half cup. One tablespoon black pepper, one teaspoon salt, one quarter cup ketchup. I believe on their menu, they're calling these baked hamburgers. And I know some of the other, the, the very few write-ups I've seen, they're calling these baked hamburgers. But I don't know, I think it, I am really opposed to making like a meatloaf and, and calling it a hamburger. It's a sandwich in my opinion. It's not a hot dog or a hamburger. One half cup milk, one half cup water. There's a lot of wet going on in there. Gloved up hands, see what it looks like when I mix this up. I'll put the link to the recipe, this recipe that I'm using down below. I'm going to also, I'll have it all typed up for you. Um, there was a few mistakes that the author of this recipe made. Um, and I found that uh, she had corrected those mistakes in one of the, like a forum. But in the original recipe online, it um, lists ketchup, but it's not, it's not telling you that it's supposed to be mixed up into the beef and it is. All right, and that is what we're looking for. Let's form these into those hamburger dog things. So one of the recipes was saying, take a uh, meatball about the size of a golf ball, form it into a hot dog shape. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll see how these look. If I feel that they're too small, I'll increase the size. Let's place them in this pan as soon as they're done. There. 
There we are. Pretty good. I'm making four. The recipe says that it yields seven to nine. Now, looking at what I have left, that looks about right. Now we're going to make a, uh, I'm going to call it a drizzle that goes on the hot dogs before you put them in the oven. All right, so to this bowl, I have here one quarter cup of sugar. And I'm using a baker sugar just because it's so fine, it'll dissolve very quickly. To that one tablespoon of water and one teaspoon of white vinegar. I'm just gonna mix this up really good. This is a very interesting recipe for me. And reading the descriptions of these bakes, it's following in line with what people are saying. Again, Indiana, Kokomo, you're kind of keeping this a secret from the rest of the world. Maybe that's a good thing. I have a feeling this is gonna be good. Right now, what I'm going to do is just take some of this sugary, vinegar, syrupy stuff <laughs> and drizzle them. Drizzle it on these dogs, these whatever you want to call them, hamburger logs, meatloaf logs. I think, you know, if you just uh, made these and used a marinara sauce you'd, and some cheese, mozzarella cheese or provolone, you'd have a pretty cool kind of a meat, meatball sandwich. All right, now let's get him in the El Patron. So as I mentioned, I am using the El Patron. Right now we're running it at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. I have lump charcoal in here and an entire split. The split that I have in there is peach wood, mainly because that's what I had on hand. So now this recipe is written with an oven in mind. So it's saying bake in the oven, 325 degrees Fahrenheit covered for 75 minutes. I don't know about the 75 minutes. We'll see that it just seems like a little bit too long, but who knows. Um, as far as covering this, I'm gonna toss it in for probably 30 minutes or so uncovered. I just wanna get a little smoke on here, then I'll foil this up. So I'm sure you already noticed I'm not using that adjustable charcoal shelf, in fact, I have those, uh, the base, which are like baffles, moved off so it's open right now. I'm cooking over direct heat um, on the fire bricks. I'm using the last notch, that sixth notch, as far as the door. And I also have the door uh, damper wide open. Both of the butterfly dampers are also open. So like I said, in 30 minutes, I'll be covering these with foil. That'll be all of our first look at these bakes. And uh, after that, we'll just continue cooking until they're done. Like I said, it says 75 minutes, we'll see. Okay, 30 minutes have passed. Let's see what these look like. And there we are, you can see they've definitely shrunk in size a little bit. So we'll see what happens with the hot dog buns. Um, but yeah, they're getting a nice kind of a smoky color. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these now. And again, like I said earlier, the recipe sinks 75 minutes total cook time. I'm still, I don't think it's gonna be 30 minutes, but we'll see. Uh, after the wrap, I'll check them 30 minutes later. That'll be an hour. That's a lot of time for, you know, little pieces of meat. Uh, we'll see. All right. So that 30 minutes have passed, so a total cooking time of an hour. And yeah, these are done. I'm gonna go ahead and put these up here for a sec. I just wanna get some heat on these buns. Just gonna give those buns a couple minutes to warm up and then we're gonna try these bakes out. All right. This one here got a little broken, pulling it out. So a lesson I learned as far as making these things is probably hit the bottom of the pan with some nonstick, some, you know, oil, need some fat down there that uh, sugary syrup kind of caramelized and uh, these uh, bakes stuck a little bit to the pan. No big deal, but it would have been a little easier, like I said, if I had thrown down a little oil there. So now we're gonna add some mustard. This is the Feltman's deli style mustard, good stuff. and some minced onion. A 
These look really good. Again, lessons were learned. Um, next time, if, if I make these again, and I have a feeling I will, <laughs> Uh, I'll definitely make them a little longer to compensate for that shrinkage and add some, uh, like I said, some nonstick to the bottom of the pan. And here we are, Kokomo Bakes from Kokomo, Indiana. Let's give this a go. Looks good. Like I said, they smell really good, but really nice color on that, on that little dog thing. Speaking of dog, there's a next door neighbor dog barking. So one of the adjectives I saw describing these was fluffy. And I had thought, that's a strange way to describe, you know, a meat product. But now I understand where that person was going. This meat um, is so, like, soft. And, and yeah, it's, it's fluffy. Really good flavor. Um, I, I like that there's a little smoke on here. Um, again, I think 30 minutes was, was about right for the smoke. Um, I definitely wouldn't have went over a, a total cook time of an hour on these. They're, they're done. Um, yeah, I mean. Mm. This cook turned out fantastic. Um, there's a little bit of a meatloaf kind of a thing going on here flavor-wise. Um, like I said, it's very... Um, <laughs> very fluffy, um, but it doesn't quite taste like a meatloaf. Um, it's really difficult to explain. Um, it doesn't not definitely doesn't taste like I'm eating a hamburger. If I was to compare this to a hot dog or a hamburger, it feels like I'm eating a hot dog more than a hamburger. Um, the taste is really good. I can really see how this would be like kind of a family favorite because, you know, you can line up a whole ton of these things in a tray and cook them all at once in the oven and get really, really good results. I, it, I think it would be hard to mess these up. Um, again, like I said, the one thing I would do, definitely do different is, at least with this recipe, because, you know, you're drizzling that, that sugar syrup on, on the top of the hot dog, of the bake, whatever it's called, um, the stuff that runs down did, you know, caramelize down below. So it just made it a little difficult to scrape the hot dogs off of the bottom of the pan. That was the mistake I made. Um, I was hoping there'd be enough fat generated from that 80-20, but it still created a little, just a minor problem. It wasn't that big of a deal. Um, other than that, it's a really good recipe and I'm very happy with the cook. El Patron, this thing, this is, again, I'm still learning this pit, and um, this is the first kind of cook like this, you know, where I was doing the direct heat, um, as far as more of a, more of a baking kind of, kind of cook, I guess, uh, but it held at 325, just very stable, and, you know, the heat source, even though it's direct heat, it's so far below, it's, it's, it kind of makes it a little bit more gentle, I guess, than if, it, you know, it's not grilling when, it, when the heat's that low. But this is good, I like this. Yeah, I'm glad I did this. Simple, but really cool, kind of a cool cook. I'd never heard of these things. And like I said, um, if you know anything about the history of this, of a bake, of a, co a Kokomo bake, Feel free to let me know down in the comments because I was really struggling trying to get that type of historical information, especially on uh, Louis uh, Coney Island. Um, so I'd like to know the history of this because it's uh, definitely a regional food. And again, it's something I'd never heard of and I cannot find any of these on YouTube. So this may be the first video on these on YouTube, at least. I don't, I don't know. Uh, anyway. Thanks again for the suggestion. I really appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, please consider hitting that sub button. Make sure you ring the notification bell. Thumb it up if you like it. I hope you did. Keep those suggestions coming in, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Kokomo Bakes from Coconut.